today's top boxing news. Oh! Let's start with this. Well, I'm sure that most of you have seen this tweet already, have heard this news. A very cryptic tweet from one Manny Pacquiao, the WBA welterweight champion, is grabbing a lot of people's attention because he added Spence. two of his welterweight rivals. And Crawford. One, Errol Spence, the IBF and WBC champion, and Terence Crawford, the WBO champion. He added them, but he didn't say much else. He didn't say, I want to fight Errol Spence next, or I want to fight Terence Crawford next. He didn't say anything of the sort. He merely added them on Twitter, and because he did, there are those out there that are interpreting this as a call-out. Myself, I maintain my reservations as to whether or not Manny Pacquiao will fight those fighters, not simply because of my own anecdotes, but because of the comments made by his manager, Sean Gibbons, and his longtime friend and now trainer, at least part of the training team, Boo Boy Fernandez. Their comments immediately after the Keith Thurman fight. And how Manny Pacquiao wasn't set to face the winner of Spence, and Porter. Spence versus Porter. And, and they were looking in other directions. They were looking at other things. Given Manny Pacquiao's age, the fact that they felt there was nothing to gain out of finding the winner of that fight. These were their words, not mine. And these are the guys closest to Manny Pacquiao, his longtime friend, Boo Boy Fernandez, and his now manager, Sean Gibbons. This isn't coming from me. It's not some wild speculation that I have cooked up. These are the facts. These are their words. And these are the people closest to Manny Pacquiao. This is what they're saying. What they said. This reminds me of what happened three years ago. Time machine! Take a trip down memory lane to the moments after... Manny Pacquiao had defeated Jesse Vargas, the then WBO champion at 147 pounds. He beats Jesse and he says that he's open to a Terrence Crawford fight. This is three years ago. Three years ago, Manny wins that fight. He says he's open to a Terrence Crawford fight and he will fight whoever they put in front of him. This is at a time when, according to Freddie Roach, Bob Arum was pushing for that fight. He wanted that fight. He wanted to put Manny in there with Crawford. This is when both those guys were on the same side of the street. But that fight, as we all know, never materialized, you know? At this time, you had Michael Conk saying that Terrence Crawford isn't on the radar, and he never was. He wasn't an option. You had Freddie Roach, and he's trainer, saying that he doesn't like that fight. It concerns him. Bob wants it. Essentially, what you had then is more or less what you have now. You might have Manny saying this and that, but the people around him are saying something else. We fast forward to the present. And Manny releases this very cryptic tweet. It doesn't say much. It simply ats those two fighters, those two world champions. But it leaves a lot to the imagination. Because Manny didn't say, I want to fight him next and I want to fight him next. He simply added both those individuals. If this is to be interpreted as a call-out, for argument's sake, let's call it that. Let's say that Manny is... is in a roundabout way trying to let people know that he's open to having a fight with those two fighters. If that's what this is, well, this is very similar to what we saw three years ago. Three years ago, he said he was open to fighting Terrence Crawford, but it never happened, and they were on the same side of the street. So three years later, I see this, and what I see is the same fucking thing. Whatever this is, I have no stock in it. Whatever this is, call out or otherwise. Maybe it's not a call out. Maybe Manny butt dialed those guys. You know, he was on the plane. He forgot to lock his phone screen. And, and you know, you know, he butt dialed those guys. Whatever this is, whether it's a call out or something else, maybe he just wanted to wish those guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Whatever this is. I have no stock in it, okay? I don't read too much into it. Manny is the A side to anyone at or around 147 pounds, you understand. Everybody wants a shot at this guy, granted, but he's the A-side, okay? He calls the shots. Manny fights whoever the fuck he wants to fight. So, the way I look at it, if Manny really wanted those guys, we wouldn't be hearing rumblings about Danny Garcia potentially getting the Pacquiao fight, or Mikey Garcia potentially getting the Pacquiao fight. But those are the rumblings that we've been hearing for weeks and months. Those are the two guys who emerged as front runners to get the Pacquiao fight. So I'm of the opinion that if Manny really wanted Terrence, he would have fought him a long time ago. If he wanted Errol, if he wants Errol, we wouldn't be hearing about Danny and Mikey. I, I, I look at this and I say, you know, 
I've nothing against Manny Pacquiao. I don't think he even has anything left to prove. His legacy is fixed. It is set in the annals of boxing history. And whatever he's doing here today is extra credit. But when I look at this, when I look at this tweet, I don't tell myself that I'm expecting to see those fights. I'm still not expecting to see those fights. I don't know what this is, but whatever it is, I've no stock in it. I'd sooner believe that Manny, upon his return, will face Danny Garcia. That's what I think is more likely to happen than either a Spence or Crawford fight. A part of me still wants to see Manny Pacquiao retire. That's right. A part of me still wants to see him call it a career because so long as he's still floating around with his name and his legacy, his marquee value, what other welterweight challengers, what other welterweight champions are out there, they're going to prioritize fighting him instead of fighting each other. He will become the crutch. He will become the excuse for these guys not to mix it up with each other and prioritize mixing it up with each other, more so than just chasing him around. I mean, take this tweet as an example. Manny's not saying much. He's not really saying anything. He just added those two fighters. But because he did, it's sent everyone into a tailspin, into a tizzy, because they're interpreting it as a call-out. Maybe that's what it is. But even if that's what it is, I've no stock in it. We'll see what develops from this story. But to be completely honest, what I don't think will develop is a fight between Manny and and either of those fighters, at least not next. I, I'm expecting that it's either going to be Danny or Mikey that faces... Manny next. Manny next. That, that's what I'm expecting. We'll see if time proves me right. In other news, two very well-known guys in the heavyweight division traded barbs via social media. Dillian White had this to say of both Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fiore. He said, Embarrassing bunch of cowards. Let's go, chumps. Hashtag clowns. To which Tyson Fiore replied, cowards. It could have been you. But someone didn't want to fight in the final eliminator versus Luis Ortiz. Did you, coward? That's why you're not fighting Wilder. Also, let's face the facts here. You struggled with Derek Tazara, and you should have lost by at least four rounds to Joseph Parker. Nearly knocked you out in round 12. You ran away from the white rhino all night. What have you ever achieved? Oh, I remember. You got sparked by Anthony Joshua for the British title, didn't you? The facts are, you're just a dosser for Eddie Hearn, hoping you might get something from the leftovers of Anthony Joshua's plate. And remember who you're talking to, the Gypsy King, the man who has done everything that you could only dream of. Hashtag, I know you're a shithouse dosser. Enjoy being a workman for Eddie. Now, I think anybody would be hard-pressed to try to win a verbal exchange against Tyson Fury, much less Dillian White, you understand, because Tyson Fury is just as skilled a wordsmith as he is a boxer. So you're not gonna win a verbal exchange with that guy. However, a fact-finding mission, there, you got a shot. You got a chance to call Tyson Fury out on his bullshit, because rest assured, there is bullshit to be addressed. You'll notice how Tyson Fury spouted the very popular narrative that Deontay Wilder's fans always love to bring up whenever Dillian White is the topic of discussion. They brought up the final eliminator, what was supposed to be a final eliminator, between Dillian White and Luis Ortiz. And it's true that the WBC ordered that fight, but what Tyson Fury isn't telling you, and what Deontay Wilder's fans won't tell you, is that even if Dillian White had participated in that eliminator, and even if he would have beat Luis Ortiz, he still wouldn't have got the Wilder fight. That's right. Did you guys forget that the WBC made two mandates when that mandate came down? The first mandate was for Deontay Wilder to satisfy his mandatory challenger, Dominic Brazil. Did you guys forget? They gave Wilder what they called two mandatories, and the winner of White versus Ortiz would be the second mandatory. As far as mandatories go, you're only supposed to satisfy one per year, and they had already advanced Dominic Brazil to the mandatory slot ahead of Dillian White. So even if Dillian would have fought Luis Ortiz, he still would have had to wait then the way he's waiting now wouldn't have made the least bit of fucking difference. That's what Tyson Fury's not telling you, and that's what Deontay Wilder's spin doctors aren't telling you. That they already advanced Dominic Brazil ahead of Dillian White, even though Dillian White was ranked ahead of him in the WBC's own rank standings. But Dominic got the slot, so he had the right 
to challenge Wilder for the title. And it would have been 12 months before they ordered another mandatory, before they ordered another mandate. Thus, if Dillian White, hypothetically speaking, would have participated in that eliminator and hypothetically speaking beat Luis Ortiz, he would have still been waiting then the way he's waiting now. That's what Tyson Fury won't tell you. Just as well, what Tyson Fury won't tell you is that that same WBC ordered him to fight Dillian White. And that wasn't that long ago. Did you guys forget that the WBC sent down a mandate ordering those two guys to fight? And who was it that walked away? It was Tyson Fury that walked away. At first, he said he'd be open to it so long as there's a diamond belt on the line. Then he reneged, he backpedaled, and walked away from the order all together. Tyson Fury won't tell you that. While he's sitting here trying to chastise Dillian White for having not cooperated with a WBC mandate, he didn't cooperate with one himself. That would have seen him fighting the same guy he's trying to badmouth to me and you. The WBC's mandate for Tyson Fury to score off against Dillian White came down in May of last year. And we all know that Tyson Fury walked away from it, only for him to turn around at the beginning of August and announce that he's going to be fighting Otto Valin, who he subsequently fought in September of last year. These are the facts. These are not my opinions. These are not my anecdotes. These are the events as they are in sequence. Tyson Fury himself did not comply with an order from the WBC. So what he's doing here is throwing stones in a glass house. If the goal here is to make Dillian White look bad, how does it look that you didn't want to fight him? Huh? That you chose to fight a lesser opponent and that lesser opponent gave you a run for your money. Huh? Opened up a gruesome gash over your eye. Huh? I mean, if the goal here is to try to make Dillian White seem like he's less of a fighter than what he is because he didn't comply with an order, then how does it look that you didn't comply with one either? Except your order would have seen you facing him. I mean, in making him look bad, you essentially make yourself look bad as well. Because you didn't fight a top 10 guy. You didn't turn him down to fight Wilder. You didn't. Did you guys forget the pecking order? Did you guys forget the sequence of events? He fights Tom Schwartz, a guy untested at the world level on the world scene. And he didn't go from fighting Tom Schwartz straight into a Deontay Wilder rematch. After the Tom Schwartz fight, they ordered you to fight Dillian White. And you didn't want to do that. You wanted to fight Otto Valin, a guy who wasn't ranked in the top 10 ranked standings of the division. And still isn't. A guy who isn't as proven on the world stage, at least he wasn't at the time. A guy who wasn't as proven as Dillian White was. You turned down a Dillian White fight for an Otto Valin fight, and you ended up struggling in the process. So while you want to highlight how Dillian struggled with Derek Chisora, you struggled with Otto Valin. I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Which fight do you think would have generated more money? Dillian White versus Tyson Fury at a venue over there in the UK, or Tyson Fury versus Otto Valin here in America? Which one? Think about it. Which fight would have yielded a bigger return. Tyson Fury versus Dillian White at the, I don't know, the O2 Arena. And you can bill that as a pay-per-view over there in the UK. As far as cash fights go, White versus Fury would have been a bigger cash fight than Fury versus Valine. Yeah. But what did Tyson Fury choose to do? He chose to fight Otto Valine. Listen, I don't give a fuck what you think would happen if they fought. I don't care about your anecdotes. I don't care about your prediction. Because this isn't about anecdotes and predictions. This is about simple matters of fact. That it's kind of hollow of Tyson Fury to try to sit here and denigrate Dillian White when you're the guy who didn't want to fight him. You chose to fight a lesser fighter than him. So if he were every inch the dasa that you want to make him out to be, what does that make you for not wanting to fight him? Huh? Do I think that Tyson Fury is afraid of Dillian White? No. No, no, I don't think that. But what I do think is that Tyson Fury is in no position to talk. That you can't chastise Dillian White for not cooperating with an order when you didn't cooperate with one yourself. An order that would have seen you fighting him. You're in no position to talk. Dillian White is a guy who earned his way and he did it the hard way. In spite of the WBC screwing him over as many times as they did, he did eventually cooperate with a final eliminator, with an order that saw him fighting a very dangerous, high-risk, low-reward guy in Oscar Rivas. And he won that fight. He won that fight in dominant fashion. So I, as a boxing fan, 
sympathize with the plight of Dillian White more than the barbs of Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, who once again is being fast-tracked to a title shot that he didn't necessarily earn. He didn't earn it the first time, and he didn't earn it the second time. By fighting who? Tom Schwartz? Otto Valin? I mean, these are guys that are ranked beneath the guys that Dillian White has fought. Think about it. Oscar Rivas is, 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 is ranked ahead of those guys. At number four. Dillian White fought that guy, beat that guy in dominant fashion. He did. But for fighting that guy, what does he get? He gets to play the waiting game. And it's Tyson Fury, once again, who sees himself challenging the WBC champion, Deontay Wilder. You can't aspire for fairness. You can't aspire for truth. And being unbiased in the sport of boxing and not highlight the inconsistencies and the hypocrisy of not only the WBC, but of Tyson Fury himself. That yeah, he did a great thing when he unseated Vladimir Klitschko. And he looked sensational against Deontay Wilder in the first fight. But at the end of the day, none of that changes. That when you were ordered to fight Dillian White, you didn't want to do it. So bringing up Luis Ortiz, those are hollow words coming from you. Because as it stands, Dillian White actually beat a guy that's ranked ahead of Luis Ortiz. That's right, in these rank standings. And he was ranked ahead of Luis Ortiz when he was ordered to fight him. So the tired old fucking narrative of, oh, Dillian didn't fight Ortiz, and that's why he didn't get the Wilder fight. That's just a lot of bullshit. It's bullshit when Wilder's fans spout it, and it's even more bullshit when it's coming from Tyson Fury. Because I reiterate, you can't make Dillian White look bad without making yourself look bad.